Hello and welcome to FE Explains. I'm Roshan Puvaya. In this episode, we take up the sticky issue of rare earth magnets and India's electric vehicle ambitions. First, what are rare earth magnets and why is it a big deal for India? Rare earth magnets are the strongest type of permanent magnets available made from alloys of rare earth elements. These are primarily from the lanthanide series of the periodic table along with scandium and yttrium. There are two main types which are largely used. These are neodymium magnets or NDFEB which is neodymium, iron and boron and samarium cobalt or SMCO magnets. These magnets have a very high magnetic strength they are resistant to demagnetization and can withstand high temperatures. They are therefore used in most electric motors, especially for electric vehicles, audio speakers, wind turbines, computer hard drives, MRI machines, defense systems, and many consumer electronics. Now at present, China dominates the rare earth magnet production scene. It's not because it has a geological monopoly as rare earth elements are found in many countries. Instead, it's a result of a deliberate and sustained strategic policy over several decades. Beginning in the 1980s, China heavily invested in rare earth mining and crucially, the downstream processing and refining industries. This allowed China to significantly undercut competitors and establish a near monopoly in the global supply chain for magnet production. China now accounts for about 70% of the world's mined rare earth elements and nearly 90% of refined production and rare earth magnets. This control over the entire value chain from raw material to finished product gives China immense economic and geopolitical leverage. So where does India stand? India is heavily dependent on China for rare earth magnets. In the last fiscal year, India sourced over 80% of its rare earth magnet imports from China. This dependence makes India vulnerable, especially at a time when the country is seriously pushing electric vehicles. You see, rare earth magnets are a key part of permanent magnet synchronous motors or PMSMs that are widely used in EVs. These motors are preferred for their high torque, energy efficiency and compact size. An average electric car, for instance, requires approximately 1.5 to 2 kilograms of NDFEB magnets. A supply crunch, like the recent export uh, restrictions imposed by China, which requires special licenses and end-use disclosures, has delayed approvals by at least 45 days. This is a major setback for India's EV sector. Automakers are already facing potential production delays, and if these delays persist beyond a couple of months, which is a typical inventory a car maker would keep, EV model launches could be delayed. And that could slow down the momentum of India's EV push. India has ambitious targets of 35-40% to 40 growth in electric passenger vehicles for FY26. Beyond EVs, other sectors like uh, consumer electronics and defense systems also rely on these magnets, which could have a larger impact. Now, some part of this supply crunch has to do with the tariff war between China and the US. But this is a dynamic situation and it's part of an ongoing trade negotiation. Historically, China has used export restrictions and licensing rather than direct tariffs to control rare earth supply. However, in the context of trade disputes like those with the US, tariffs have been a tool. For example, reports have mentioned a framework where the US could impose a 55% tariff on imported Chinese goods, including rare earth magnets, while China might charge 10% tariff on American imports. But China's recent export controls on rare earth elements and magnets are more a direct measure to control supply rather than imposing specific tariffs on exports. So what are the alternate sources for India? Why are we so dependent on China? In fact, India is actively seeking to diversify its rare earth magnet supply and build domestic capabilities. Some of these short-term strategies include inventory management to manage supply shocks, looking at alternative suppliers from countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, Japan, Australia and the US. And of course, trying to incentivize local manufacturing of magnets. In the longer term, India's strategy is to fast track rare earth exploration. Uh, the Geological Survey of India has identified deposits and exploration projects are already taking place. 
There are companies that are looking to ramp up production of neodymium magnets with a target of 5,000 tons by 2030. India Rare Earths Limited IREL, which earlier supplied defense and atomic energy, is commissioning a rare earth permanent magnet plant to produce samarium cobalt magnets. Of course, India is also looking at scaling up its recycling infrastructure, collecting rare earth magnets from scrap motors and vehicles, which could fuel a circular economy. For the longer term, the country is also looking at strategic partnerships with other countries like Kazakhstan to secure critical mineral supply chains. Hopefully, these measures will reduce India's vulnerability and ensure a more resilient supply chain for rare earth magnets. For the moment, it's still a dynamic situation, but it's one that we hope to resolve in the long run. For more such news that you can use, follow financialexpress.com and please like, share and subscribe to this channel.